Welcome, my name is Ariel Callender. I am FWC's Public Information Coordinator for the South Region. And tonight we are Bayside on Isle Morada. And you can't see them right now because it's dark, but our captains for the day are Senior Officer Jason Rafter and Officer Daniel Marshall. And I'm also here with our Public Information Officer. Can you introduce yourself? Hi everybody, my name is Officer Tyson Matthews. I am our Public Information Officer for the South Region. Hi, I'm Shannon Knowles. I'm communications out of our Tallahassee office. And hey everyone, I'm Colonel Roger Young. I'm the Colonel for the Division of Law Enforcement. And today we are out here for lobster sport season. And so um, I know Shannon, this is your first time in the Keys, your first time lobstering. So uh, do you have any questions for these guys? A lot. So <laughs> yes, this is my first time in the Keys. I'm super excited to be here. I'm learning a lot already. And so tonight we're out learning all about bully netting, but there's also some other things to know about. So Officer Matthews. Yes, ma'am. Um, tell me a little bit about, so it's sport, it's lobster sport season. So that is when, when does that occur every year? Is it always July, the last Wednesday and Thursday every year? That's right. It's okay. always the last Wednesday and Thursday of every July okay. is our mini sports season. Okay. And um, so tell me a little bit about some of the regulations with regards to lobstering during the sports season. Absolutely. In this county, specifically in Monroe, where we're at, your bag limit is going to be six. In other counties, it's 12. And also something to keep in mind is our bag limits. Um, in addition to bag limits is our size limits. We have a three inch carapace measurement that we asked for. It needs to be greater than that measurement. And they also cannot be egg bearing. Okay. And so that is six per person per day, right? That's right. Okay. It's per licensed harvester, yep. Okay. Um, and so are there different types of lobster that people go lobstering for or just one specific type? I've heard the term spiny lobster, so I don't know if there's other types or if it's just that one that people come out for. That's right. There's actually several different species okay. of lobster, but usually people are going to be catching the Florida spiny lobster that's here, but okay. you may find some slipper lobster in the area, but usually it's just spiny lobster. Okay. And so um, what about some of the, like we're out here bull, for uh, bully netting. So can you tell me if there's any regulations with regards to bully netting that we need to know about? Yes, bully netting. It's, it's a great way to spend the evening. It's nice and cool out here. Um, you're not in the sun, you don't have to get wet. And you can also use a flashlight to help you. You'll see the, you'll see the lobster's eyes if you shine the net, uh, light actually. You'll get your bully net, scoop them up. And it's just another great method to take advantage of the mini season here at night. Okay. We're here with Ryan and Luke, who are our bully netting experts for the night, and they're going to tell us a little bit more about what bully netting is and their tips and tricks. So great. I don't know anything about bully netting. I've never been to the Keys. This is my first time. I'm super excited to be here and learn all about bully netting and why you two and many others come down and do this at night. So can you guys tell us a little bit about what bully netting is? Sure, so bully netting is coming out. As soon as it gets dark, the lobster will come out of their holes, come out of the mangroves to feed on the grass flats. We put an underwater light with a generator power and we use, this is a bully net, it's about a 10 foot piece of wood or metal with a steel hoop on the end and a long net. We see the lobster on the bottom, we drop the net on top of them, he shoots back into the net and we lift them into the boat. We drop them, we measure them, we check them for eggs, then we either keep them or let them go. And that's bully netting. That's about as simple as it is. And these guys have a really great setup. It's a, it's a shallow draft boat. This typically takes place in about two to four to five feet of water. Uh, nice lights with the generator powering those lights, illuminating the, the flats and the grass flats. And those, those eyes really light up when the light's on them. So it makes it really easy. Just a really neat, fun way to catch lobster. You're not fighting with the crowds in the water and you're not having to deal with the hot sun and the heat. So you don't really, have to get in the water. You don't have to get in the water. It's a really enjoyable way to catch lobster. Yeah. So do you guys have some specimens to show us that you've caught already? Yeah, Ryan. Nice rope. What, four or five minutes before we got? Sure. So how many did you have you caught so far? We've caught five so far in a Oh, okay. Few and a few shorts that we let go. Yeah. So. Okay. 
So when you say, so a few shorts you let go, and then these were all within the legal limit. Sure. Yeah. So then you have just one more left to get for tonight. One more for one person's limit, yeah. and then we'll get That's six right. more for that. Right. Okay. So we so use the gauge just like that. doesn't fall over the carapace, and we're good to go. There you go. Awesome. Okay, That's so good. hopefully all goes well. You'll have your 12 lobster then for this evening, and you'll be ready to go and a couple nights so. worth of dinner. We'll be, we'll be eating lobster tomorrow night. Yeah. So how much time did it take you to catch those lobster? Those uh, five? About five minutes. That's yeah. amazing. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It's an amazing okay. Way so to only catch five them. minutes to just catch those? It's yeah. important. As soon as that sun goes down, they're ready to feed. Okay. They've been waiting all day to get out on the flat. So these were actually caught right on the edge of the mangroves as they're coming out. Oh, wow. As it okay. gets darker, you'll be out in the more open water as they have time. They can walk pretty fast. Mm -hmm. So real quick, any tips that you guys have for anyone watching that's thinking about going bully netting during lobster sports season. Uh, you just have to get out there and you'll get some. Okay. Some nights might be slow, but you have to stick it out. Sometimes it'll take a few hours and then we'll start walking and then you'll have your limit in 10 minutes. Wow, okay, awesome. Well, thank you both so much. We really appreciate it. Thank you for educating us on all things bully netting. And we appreciate you having all your safety equipment. Everything looks great. And your license looks great, too. So thank you guys for being great stewards of the resource. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Absolutely. Sounds good. Thanks, appreciate guys. Appreciate it. you. Thanks. So, Colonel Young, any Monroe County-specific um, tips that you want to provide with regards to bully netting? Yeah, so uh, as, as any time you're going fishing or especially lobstering, be sure to check where you're going. Uh, before you go so so you'll know and learn all the local regulations so here in Monroe County and in the Keys there are some special prohibited areas uh, John Penny Camp State Park you cannot bully net in and also uh, Everglades National Park you cannot bully net or catch lobster in so we want to make sure that you're aware of all those uh, local rules and regulations in area in any area that you may be lobstering or fishing in because each area is uh, different and specific any boating safety tips for when you're out at night I know a lot of times we a lot of them still apply, you know, obviously BUI, not being right. under the influence of alcohol or drugs while operating right. a vessel. I know we have zero tolerance for that. Mm -hmm. But at night, it's a couple of other boating safety tips that we would want to provide because things are, the conditions are a lot different, obviously. Absolutely. Number one, navigation lights. You want to make sure that you have the proper nav navigation lights illuminated so when you're operating your vessel, other vessels can see you. Uh, and also, if you're using a Q-beam or a spotlight to shine for lobster while you're bullying knitting, Make sure that you're cognizant of where you're shining that light. You don't want to shine other boats because you might uh, temporarily uh, blind them or in, in, in hamper their ability to see outside their vessel as well. So make sure that you're really courteous with your light. Keep it shining in the water and, uh, and be aware of that. Okay. So, Officer Matthews, any other boating safety tips that you'd want to add to that that you can think of? No, oh, it's all great. The only thing I can add is, you know, maybe let somebody know where you're going. That way, if you don't return at the correct time, we can start looking for you and hope everything's okay. And I'll add one thing too, safe speed. Make sure when you're operating at night, you maintain a safe speed. Things are different at night. They're dark. Um, even if you're relying on GPS or electronic navigation equipment, you still want to make sure you, make, you maintain a surrounding and awareness of where you are and make sure that you maintain a safe speed so you can, can get home safely. Big thank you to our captains, Officer Daniel Marshall, Senior Officer Jason Rafter. Uh, thanks to Officer Matthews and Shannon. And Colonel, do you have any last words for us? Yeah, so anyone that's going to be fishing, boating, hunting, if you have any questions about what you're going to be doing, don't forget to check our website at myfwc.com. And then remember, if you don't have your fishing license, a great easy way to do that is to the online app at uh, Fish Hunt Florida. Uh, it's an app that you can get in your app store. Get your fishing license, get out there, have fun, enjoy the resources.